Okay, so this past summer, uh, I was given a gift, and we got to go to Hawaii with like three of my best friends. And so we just say that it was breathtaking. We did so many adventurous things. We saw vibrant colors in the rainforest. The water was crystal, or crystal clear. And we saw everything, and it was just so nice how the people were just so welcoming, you know, happy all the time. But um, the thing I would like to share with you today is that you don't really know your friends until you spend an entire week with them alone, with no supervision at all. <laughs> and so I'm going to talk today about what the word friendship means and how it incorporates into my entire story. So we got to Oahu and our hotel was awesome. It was right on the beach and we walked out and we're just like, oh my god, yeah, this is awesome, you know? And the breeze was everywhere, people were nice, and no one wore shoes. And that was a bonus because I hate wearing shoes. <laughs> so we put our stuff in our room and then we came back out and just relaxed. And so the next day, we, in the next couple of days, we traveled. And so we wanted to travel and look at different places. So we went to the Diamond Head Point, which is a mountain where we got to stand and look at different things. And this is a picture of us. And on the side that we're, you look straight out, it's the ocean. And so you see everything crystal clear. And then on the next side, we see the city, which is the city's pretty big. And then back here, if you like turn around, is like the rainforest and everything. And then on the next side, looking this way, is the North Shore. And so the North Shore is basically where all the locals live, where they have plantations, farming, Basically, that's their side of the island. And so, when we go there, I was like, guys, we got to go cliff jumping. That's like the number one thing that I wanted to do. And so, we did it. And it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the rock was so high, it was unbelievable. You were like standing, you are like, oh my gosh, we're doing this. And we did it. But one at a time, because if we went all together, you died. <laughs> but um, after that, we went zip lining, And there we go. We went ziplining, and ziplining is another exhilaration. It, the adrenaline is awesome. So much to do, so much to see, and you're on this platform, and you're basically just standing there, and the instructor's like, okay, I know you haven't done this before, but I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to push you off. And you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're just standing there, and you're standing there, and you're like, oh my god. And I wasn't ready, because I'm afraid of heights, so he was like, okay, ready? And he just, you know, pushed me, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it was really fun. I had a great time. That was like one of the best experiences. But coming back around from the North Shore, we got lost. And, you know, how ironic, right? On a small island, we get lost. And we stopped right in front of Dog the Bounty Hunter's house. And we know it's Dog the Bounty Hunter's house because on his gate, he has like a, a self portrait, you could say, of his face on the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and so. We're like, oh my god, like, let's get out of the car and take a picture. So we got out of the car, ran over, and took a picture. But as we were taking a picture, I was like, Rainy. Rainy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, there's a surveillance camera. I think we should leave. <laughs> because you know what he does. He's, he's criminals. <laughs> so I was like, we should get out of here. So we ran back in the car and went home. But as a week went by, I started to realize how my friends wanted to spend the rest of their time. Like at the beginning of the week, we were pumped, we were ready, we wanted to explore, and then towards the middle and end, they didn't want to do any more of that. They wanted to sit in the hotel room, relax, watch TV, but I was trying to convince them, like, hey, we're in paradise, we've never been here before, let's experience some stuff that we've never experienced before, and, you know, they just got tired, and they just didn't want to do that anymore. And I found myself thinking, like, well, why am I here with them if they don't want to do that, you know? Why don't I just go explore myself, you know, by myself and do things myself? And I realized that my memories would be vacant without them. Like, I need them to share things with. So, <clears throat> even though we had our differences, we saw things in different views, we still stuck together. I mean, I would call my mom late at night, you know, without them knowing. <laughs> I'd be like, Mom, they don't want to do anything. <laughs> what I'm here in paradise, and what do I do? My friends just want to sit around. I can't do that, you know me. And I mean, it came down to like saying, like, we had to talk towards the middle of the week, and I was like, guys, please, I know we're different, I know you guys like to sit, but I don't want to sit. Like, maybe we should sit half the day city and do something else the rest of the day. And so we figured that out, and we worked, we compromised, and that was basically our time that we had. Like, we realized that even though we're different, even though we have different ideas, different perspectives on what we want to do and how we want to do it, 
an adventure in Hawaii, we still stuck together and stayed friends. That's what friendship's all about. <laughs> got you. He's like, gotta do it. Yeah, that's like more like this. It's really cool. He's sick. Yeah. Just tell. <laughs> All right, well, you're telling us a personal story is your attention advice. That's fine. Uh, you've got to transition to a topic, and it really turns out that you're going to be talking about friendship and what you discover about your friendships after a period of time together. So I think, I'm thinking, well, that'll be an interesting twist, and the Hawaii thing is just background. And then we don't really get back to that issue for another two and a half minutes. So it's, it, it, it does turn out to be a part of what you're talking about, but it's not the main focus because we do get the Hawaii stories that go along with it. And uh, they are being told a little bit uh, frantically. Sometimes you're rushing them. Uh, you know, I finally caught Dog the Bounty Hunter. I think that, that uh, you, when you first say that, it, it kind of gets rushed, and I wasn't even sure what you were talking about. And then, then it made a little bit more sense. So I think you, you know, you just need to have a little bit more control over what you're talking about. It's like, you know, energy. You know, you're a puppy dog talking about the the trip that you took, and, oh, and then we did this, and then we did this, then. And so you're kind of a little all over the place, and you and you want to be a little more more focused. You want to be in more control. It's a speech. It's not. Uh, you don't want to spew your enthusiasm about the subject. You want to present it, and so as a consequence, it just feels a little like you're winging it too much. You, you know, I'm, somebody handed you something right before you started. I kept waiting for you to tell us something about that, and you never did. It's in your hand the whole time you're speaking, and I'm, I'm not sure what it was, and it was kind of a distraction. Was it a picture? All right, you know, so I don't know if it's a picture that you needed to inspire you, but if, it, if you're not going to use it in the presentation, you probably want to keep it out of your hands so that it's not a distraction to you. Sometimes you, sometimes you do a nice job speaking to us. You, your face looks really animated, and I think your voice con conveys, like I said, the enthusiasm that you're talking about, but you need to focus it sometimes and, and, and kind of get a little bit more, here's the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, and uh, in, instead of just kind of re-experiencing the things that you're talking about, because that's kind of the way it sounds sometimes, is that you are kind of re-experiencing, you're telling the story, instead of just giving us a presentation about those events. Um, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, a little bit of anxiety in the feet, uh, which don't have shoes on them, apparently. No, you've got shoes no, today. Shoes. <laughs> you know, maybe that's why you're a little anxious. And, and then, um, and then, like I said, the object in your hand, that seems a little uh, distracting. 
Uh, it's probably just a little more casual uh, than you want it to be as a presentation. All right, thank you.